As Iran's supreme leader vows to wipe out Israel within 25 years, critics of the president's nuclear deal with Iran rally as Congress takes up that deal. This is Special Report. Good evening. Welcome to Washington. I'm Brett Baer. President Obama's oft-stated hope that U.S. and Western relations with Iran will improve as a result of their nuclear agreement appears to be backfiring tonight. Ayatollah Ali Khamenei, anti-America, anti-Israel vitriol, is reaching new extremes as critics of the deal continue to rail against it with no short-term prospects for a victory. Chief Political Correspondent Carl Cameron has tonight's top story from Capitol Hill. In 90 degree heat, Donald Trump took the stage at a Capitol Hill protest against the Iran nuclear deal, sponsored by the Tea Party Patriots, the Zionist Organization of America, and the Center for Security Policy. Thousands turned out. Never, ever, ever in my life have I seen any transaction so incompetently negotiated as our deal with Iran. We are led by very, very stupid people. Unlike his GOP rivals, Trump does not plan to immediately nullify the Iran deal if elected. He says the next president must be a negotiator. And after the four Americans imprisoned in Iran now are freed, and Trump asks Congress to reimpose sanctions, he says he'll renegotiate with Tehran, but will not say how. I don't talk because I don't want to talk. I don't want to, I don't want to say things that the other side is going to learn everything about me. Hillary Clinton, who helped start the Iran talks, dumped on Trump's proposed renegotiation as naive, but suggested it could be strengthened during implementation. And we will begin from day one to set the conditions so Iran knows it will never be able to get a nuclear weapon, not during the term of the agreement, not after, not ever. It was Ted Cruz that invited Trump to the Capitol rally. He makes no secret of courting Trump's supporters should the real estate mogul falter and disagreed with renegotiating with Iran. Any commander in chief worthy of defending this nation should be prepared to stand up on January 20th, 2017 and rip to shreds this catastrophic deal. But the protest will have little effect on national security. GOP leaders concede President Obama has the votes, 42 now in the Senate, to overcome bipartisan opposition to the Iran deal. In North Carolina today, Jeb Bush focused on economic security and laid out his plan to reform and reduce federal taxes. He'd slash the current seven federal income tax brackets to three. The top bracket of 39% would drop to 28, followed by 25 and 10% brackets. He'd eliminate tax breaks for hedge fund managers and private equity billionaires and significantly cut the current corporate tax rate, among other things. We will bring the corporate tax rate from 35 percent, the highest corporate tax rate in the industrial world, down to 20 percent, which is below that of China. For the last couple of weeks, Bush has distinguished himself from the rest of the pack by almost daily attacks on Trump, in one case for saying Trump would raise taxes. But tomorrow, for the first time, one of the other Republican candidates will call a full-dress news conference for the express purpose of going after Trump. Louisiana Governor Bobby Jindal will do so at the National Press Club and told me tonight that he thinks of Trump as not a conservative, not really a liberal, but an egomaniacal narcissist who cares only about himself. Quoting Bobby Jindal, Brett. Strong letter to follow. Carl Cameron on the Hill. Carl, thanks. House Speaker John Boehner may be facing a coup attempt by fellow Republicans. And now the House effort to go on the record against President Obama's nuclear deal with Iran has run into big problems. Chief Congressional Correspondent Mike Emanuel has breaking details. Good evening, Mike. Well, Brett, good evening. The House plan to disapprove of the Iran nuclear deal derailed when rank-and-file Republicans told their leadership they did not want to vote without all the information. The new plan is for the House to have three votes to approve of the nuclear deal, which would fail, to prohibit the administration from lifting sanctions against the regime, and to say the president has not submitted all the necessary paperwork so the congressional review period has not triggered a delay when time Time is running short. With issues like the Iran nuclear deal funding the government and eventually raising the debt ceiling, it's setting up to be a very difficult autumn on Capitol Hill. Today, John Boehner dismissed those raising doubts about his future as speaker. Does not make it more difficult. I've got widespread support in the conference, and, uh, and I appreciate that. If challenged, Boehner must maintain an absolute majority of the House, 218 votes. If less than 30 Republicans oppose him and Democrats walk away, it would throw the chamber into chaos. Boehner's allies note his job is complicated by running the House with a Democrat president and insists they have the speaker's back. We shouldn't force our leaders to look 
you know, around their behind their back every minute of the day, and we need to let him do their job. He's doing as good a job as he can. He has a tough job. And House Democratic leaders are critical of Boehner on budget issues, saying there should be negotiations underway with the government due to run out of money at the end of the month. We can only conclude uh, that once again, instead of leading, uh, they are allowing the Tea Party to lead and they are following. The speaker's conservative critics say they were elected to hold the line on spending and their constituents want Congress to defund Planned Parenthood after the release of these shocking videos over the summer. So they say they'll be watching to see how Boehner handles these hot button issues. So you put the budget stuff together with that moral issue and our leadership doesn't move on it, the rest of the country is just going to say, all right, that's it, right? We're fed up. It's tsunami time. Throw everybody out. Despite all the challenges, there was some big news today for Boehner and House Republican leadership when a federal judge said a lawsuit filed about the way the administration paid for an Obamacare subsidy has standing. Sources tell me Boehner told the Republican conference at a late afternoon meeting and the room erupted in cheers. Brett. Mike Emanuel live on the Hill. Mike, thanks. Hillary Clinton's latest campaign reset designed to make her appear more spontaneous, compassionate and transparent is underway. But Chief White House correspondent Ed Henry tells us things are not getting any easier for a candidate that once appeared inevitable. Hillary Clinton tried to pivot from the apology tour over her email to potentially more favorable ground from her time as Secretary of State. Pushing back on criticism, she was central to U.S. concessions to Tehran by walking the fine line of supporting President Obama on Iran while insisting she'd be tougher if the regime cheats. They'll want to see how far they can bend the rules. That won't work if I'm in the White House. Yet questions about Clinton bending the rules continue to plague her campaign. I'm sorry about that. I take responsibility. An apology, something Clinton refused to budge on for months. She tried to deny that voters cared about the email controversy. I thought using one device would be simpler, and obviously it hasn't worked out that way. Everything I did was permitted. There was no law, there was no regulation. Maybe the heat is getting to everybody. You may have seen that I recently launched a Snapchat account. I love it. Those messages disappear all by themselves. I'm going to let whatever this um, um, inquiry is go forward and we'll you know, await uh, the outcome of it. Did you wipe the server? What, like with a cloth or something? No, well, no. Nobody talks to me about it other than you guys. At the end of the day, I am sorry that uh, this has been confusing to people. Clinton's change of heart came after her advisors conducted a focus group in New Hampshire where real voters said they want to hear more about emails, rejecting the candidate's claim that only reporters cared. It gave me, you know, opportunities far beyond anything my mother or my father could have had. And the same day the New York Times reported her team wanted to show her being more authentic, Clinton teared up talking about her late mother when ABC News pressed if she ever asked why she's putting herself through another campaign. She told me every day, you've got to get up and fight for what you believe in, no matter how hard it is. A similar we discussion about happening. opportunities in America we sparked Clinton's it. tears in the 2008 so campaign, think... leading to a comeback victory in the New Hampshire primary. You know, I have so many opportunities from this country. I just don't want to see us fall backwards. You know. New information tonight, the House Benghazi Committee will bring in former Clinton IT staffer Brian Pagliano tomorrow to officially take the fifth. Meanwhile, Senator Charles Grassley is saying he'll offer Pagliano immunity, which could obviously complicate matters for Clinton big time, Brett. Okay, Ed, thank you. Well, do you think Clinton can put the email scandal behind her? Let me know at Facebook.com slash BrettBearSR or on Twitter at BrettBear. Use the hashtag special report. We may use some later in the show. Up next, dealing with a refugee crisis that one administration official calls a disaster of biblical proportions. First, here's what some of our Fox affiliates around the country are covering tonight. Fox 10 in Phoenix with 10.
That's the number of vehicles damaged by a possible gunshot along Interstate 10. Ten vehicles hit by either a bullet or another projectile in the past 10 days. Authorities are asking for the public's help. Fox 45 in Baltimore, as the mayor says, the $6.4 million settlement between the city and the family of a man killed while in police custody is meant to bring closure and avoid years of protracted litigation. Freddie Gray died after being critically injured during his detention. Six police officers face criminal charges in that case. And this is a live look at Las Vegas from our affiliate Fox 5. The big story there tonight, the investigation into a fire on a British Airways jet. It happened yesterday, shortly after, shortly before takeoff, rather. All of the passengers and crew exited that plane. About a dozen were treated for minor injuries, many from sliding down the inflatable escape chutes. That's tonight's live look outside the Beltway from Special Report. We'll be right back.